All right, take three. <laughs> um, I've gathered you here today because one, I'm unemployed, so I have time. Two, it's hot. Three, my bun looks fantastic. And I would like to teach you some magic. There's so many people I've talked to on my stream or in chats that don't know how to play magic. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a few minutes, play a match, and um, you sit back, relax, and I'm going to try and explain to you how to play magic. Um, now, I'm going to be playing on Magic the Gathering Arena. You can get it off of their site, so you can just Google that. It's free to play, and it's great if you're new to Magic. It's great if you're not new to Magic. It's fun. Um, but there are some introductory missions, if I guess you could call them games, that kind of show you what to do. Um, but I'll explain also, maybe pique your interest a little bit. And uh, let's do it. So first of all, I'm just going to show you what a magic card looks like. So here's a deck that I'm messing with. Fun deck. Um, as you see here, this card that's popped up is says Swamp here. What this is, is this is a land card. We also call that mana in magic. So what these cards do is they allow you to cast cards. So it's important to have mana in your deck because without mana, you can't play anything. So as you can see, this is, says deck 60 out of 60. So when you're making a deck, you have to have 60 cards in it. And obviously that's made up of your mana, the type of card. So there's different types of cards. There are creature cards, sorcery cards, instants, and enchantments. Um, so I'll explain that a little more as well. So I showed you the land card first because that's kind of the basis of everything. I'll go with my, my cheapest cards here. So this deck that I'm playing, it's mono black, which just means it's one color. I like to play black. I find it fun. It's my favorite color to play. Each color brings something different to the table. Get it? Table? Eh? Eh? Um, black is, it, it has to deal with a lot of, um, straight up murder cards, sacrificing cards either for the benefit of yourself or to, uh, damage the other opponent. Um, there's, there's lots of other things that, that black brings to the table. There's going into your graveyard. Now, what your graveyard is, is when your cards are used up. Or when your creatures die, they go to your graveyard. But what black allows you to do with a lot of their cards is you can go into your graveyard and you get those cards right back out. So that's fun to me. I like that. Also, zombies are black, tend to be black. I like to, I like to play with zombies. So this card, see here, the name of the card is Barrier Bones. It says it's a creature card. It's a skeleton wall. So that's the type of card it is. It's a skeleton and it's a wall. Now, if you look at the top right, that is the casting cost. So you see that that's the same symbol that was on our swamp card. So what that means is it's going to take one swamp to cast this card. So we can play this on turn one, given that we have any mana in our hand at all, which we should on turn one. Otherwise, you'll be mulliganing. And I'll explain that in a second as well. So this is another card here. Uh, cost one to cast, so you'll just tap your your one mana. Tap means to use it. So when you're using it, it you turn it, it's tapped, you can't use it anymore, you used it. So that's also on this card. So this is a creature, it's a zombie. Diagraph Ghoul, it's, this is a good card. Um, and what this says is, Diagraph Ghoul enters the battlefield tapped. So when you play this card, it's going to come in tapped as if you've already used it. Now, usually when you put a creature out, right away it has summoning sickness, which means you can't attack with that card right away. You'll have to wait till the next one. So what this means, though, is that it's already tapped, so we couldn't even block with it if we wanted to. So it's just tapped, it's out of play. Think of tapping out, like in fighting. 
Um, that's a good good way to remember it. Here's another low a low um, costing card. This costs one. Target player reveals their hand, so you target the opponent. You choose an artifact or a creature card. So as I said, this would be a creature card. It says there four artifacts. It will say that on the card as well if it's an artifact. And then that player discards that card. So you choose a card. You get to see the opponent's hand. Choose a card from it. And you discard it. They can't use it. Let's see here. Now let's go down to a higher, um, higher cost card. Now this costs two. Now if you see it here, there is the skull, which means swamp. And there's a number one. Now what that means is... If I was playing a two-color deck or a three-color deck, I could use mana of any color to cast with that one there. So I would pay the one black, because you have to have one black, it says. And then I could use one mana of any color. I could use one land of any color. It's technically called colorless. So there's even cards that produce colorless mana. You can use it for that. Um, now, as I... As I said, you know, like, magic has several layers to it. If this is a success, if people like seeing this, I'll post more videos and I can explain more. Um, but yeah, that's the basics of the cards. Um, so as I showed you as well, these were creatures. That was a sorcery, so you can cast that on your turn. You can cast it either during your main phase or your post main or your post combat phase let's see i know i have instants in here this is an instant you can cast this on your turn or you can cast it on the opponent's turn you can cast it at any time but sorceries and enchantments they're kind of similar you cast them on your turn you can't cast them on the opponent's turn creatures you can mostly just cast them on your turn there are some creatures you can cast on an opponent's turn and they have what's called flash so a lot of these mechanics it will say like it's the bolden one there so this says defender and the cool thing about Re arena is it explains it to you there so like this card that i have here is a defender so it can't attack it can only defend if i have anything else like that menace here's another good one so what menace means is that two creatures would have to block it in order for it to be blocked, otherwise it can't be blocked. And we'll we'll see more of that in just a second here. All right, so this is just a deck I've been messing with. Here's my zombie deck, it's one of my favorites. And I'm just gonna play a quick match. I'll let you guys go. This is already eight minutes, holy crap. All right, play a game, see how we go. All right, sorry, I just got a message. All right. Um, so yeah, you just want to take a look at your hand. You want to see if you can cast anything. You want to see if you have mana. I have so two cards, three cards, four cards here that are actually pretty good. I have enough mana. I'm going to keep this. Now, if... I didn't have a good opening hand, I could mulligan, and it says here it replaces the seven cards, so it trashes them, you get six new cards, and what you'd be able to do is you would be able to scry, so you could look at the top of your library and decide if you want to keep it on your library or put it on the bottom. So at the beginning of each turn, you can play one land, and then you can go from there. Um, so if you have something to cast, turn one, he did. Now I do as well. We will go ahead and play this. As I explained what this card did earlier, we're going to look at his hand, see what we can get rid of. And only that card, so we just click it, because that was the only creature card in his hand. Now, at the beginning of every game, you each start with 20 life, and the object of the game is to get their life total down to zero. And for you not to get down to zero. 
Um, you start with seven cards, as I said. If you have to mulligan, you start with six. If you have to mulligan, uh, mulligan again, you start with five. It keeps going from there. Um, mulligan, it's, it's hit or miss. Sometimes it helps you out of a shitty situation. Sometimes it makes your hand shittier. It's just really a lot about magic is the luck of the draw. Eh? The luck of the draw? Okay, so he's playing a sorcerer on his turn, drawing two cards, then he has to discard a card unless he attacked with a creature, which he did not. get rid of there. Ooh. Goodness, okay. Okay. So we still only have two mana. That's alright. Um... We are going to play this card. So it deals the one damage to him. Straight to the face, which is what we call a life total. He's gonna have to discard a card. And he's going to have to put the top part of his library into his graveyard. So here's our library. Here's our graveyard. Now, so this is the, the main phase. So the main phase, you draw a card. You place your land if you want to. And you decide if you're going to play a card. Then there's combat phase. So I don't have anything here. I can't block anything. So he can just attack straight to my face. And then after your combat phase, there's another phase. And during that phase, you could cast the creature. If you still have the mana, you could cast enchantment, whatever, whatever. We're going to put out a creature. We still aren't getting mana. That's okay. He doesn't have a lot of cards left because we've been being rude to him. But we can see that he does have a counter spell. What, that's, what that does is if I play, let's say next turn I play this Doom to Center and he doesn't want that out, he can just play this card and it goes straight to my graveyard. So I don't get to play it, unfortunately. Interesting. Since he doesn't have a lot here, I'm thinking he might counter... Might counter this. If he wastes it. And he did. So the reason why I'd rather have him counter that one is because we have Reassembling Skeleton. So we can just keep getting this back out, which is very nice. Um, I'm going to hang back. No attackers. So yeah, this card, it says on the bottom, return Reassembling Skeleton from your graveyard to the battlefield tap. So as soon as it dies, like we can just keep, keep using that to chump block to block creatures and get it right back out. Now, so he's attacking me and we have a creature out now. So what we're doing is the left is our power and the right is our toughness. So think of it as attack and health. So since we are both 2-2, two, two, we'll kill each other. A to G. Now what I'm going to do here We don't know what's in his hand. I am just going to get the skeleton out for this turn. Now, he can keep attacking us because this has flying. The only way that you can block flying is if you have another flying creature or if you have a creature that has reach. Just think of reach as like an archer um, or a really big spider. So magic is so much easier if you just visualize a lot of things. It helps so much. So think of this, this character, or this, this creature had flash. So it can just come in at any time. He can cast it like an instant. Which just flash into battle. All right. Um, we're gonna get our Death Baron out finally. This is like the holy grail of all zombie cards. Because it helps buff our zombies or skeletons, and it gives them death touch. So that means even if this card was something that I couldn't block that would just kill my card, it would die as well because it touched me. So we're going to do no attackers. 
Gonna see what he does here. He can't do much. He's just gonna... Oh, okay. Well, we're gonna do that. I'm actually a little surprised that he... He attacked there. That's alright. Um... We're gonna recast him. He's gonna come in tapped because that's what it says on the card. So that means he's tapped out. I can't use him. And he, if you if you look at here, the, the little ripples coming off of the card, it means it has summoning sickness anyways. So I wouldn't be able to use him right away anyways. The reason I can use Death, Bar Death Baron is because I cast him last turn. So yeah, it usually takes a turn to be able to actually use the card. Which is all good. So right now he's top decking. He's just banking on that he's going to get something good off the top of his deck. Which he may or may not. We shall see. Blue is a lot about control. It's a lot about like controlling the situation, controlling the game. You decide if you want that person to have that card, if you want that creature to be out there, if you want to return it back to the owner's hand. If you see here, um, it's a, it has a, an effect to counter a target spell or ability that targets you or a creature you control. You can sacrifice this card to just use it as a counter spell. So that is also a lot of what blue is. It's a lot about countering spells so that they can't even be put into play. All right, my turn. All righty. So here's something interesting. We've got this card. Cost four. As an additional cost to cast a spell, we can sacrifice a creature. It has flying and trample. So if we get this out, we can finally block this little shit. And what we're going to do is we're going to sacrifice our skeleton because we can get him right back out. We, we can't this turn because we don't have enough to cast him. But we can just keep casting him. So it's not a big deal to sacrifice him. Whereas if we sacrifice our death baron, he'd go straight to the graveyard. And then if I didn't, let's say I didn't have grave digger. He'd be in my graveyard. And he's crucial to my deck. Very important card. Whereas the skeleton, I can just keep paying to get him back out. He's really easy to get back out of my graveyard. Gravedigger, though, I do have this in my hand. And it allows me to get cards back from my graveyard. Put them in my hand. So it's not too bad. Let's see here. We're just going to attack with our Death Baron. See what he can do. He might be getting a little frustrated because he's not seeming to get much to help his situation. Now I have a flyer. He could still win though. You'd be surprised. Our life total is, is very close. And I don't have that much out. He could easily have something go right back to my head. In Magic, the games can turn around so quickly. So I'll explain this card to you a little bit more. So it's a four, uh, four cost cast, and it costs two black, two colorless. Okay, so he's gonna tap this and probably attack. Maybe not. We'll see. Um. So yeah, so it has an additional cost to cast that I had to, to sacrifice a creature. We did that. It has flying. And it has trample. The trample's very annoying and very fun. A lot of green cards have trample. Um, or big creature cards have trample sometimes. Now what trample does is let's say I did attack... So let's say I did attack and he blocks with this because it's flying now due to this enchantment. This enchantment allowed this to get plus two, plus two, and has flying. So let's say I attack with this and he blocks with this one. Trample will trample through that card to the life total. So I will still do two damage. Whereas normally, if this didn't have trample, this would soak up the damage. The card would soak up the damage. So what we'll do here is we'll get our skeleton out. And 
we'll get our death baron out. So I'm going to attack with both. Because I do have a Grave Digger. I'm not too worried about losing my Death Baron. It does have Death Touch. So even if he blocks it, it's going to die. So I'm not too worried about it. And he did. So he wants to kill it off too. So they both die. Normally that, that card wouldn't have died. The only reason it died is because I have Death Touch. So just think about it. Think of like some creepy zombie with like black like fog coming out of its mouth and like its fingertips and stuff like that and it just touches you and you just like immediately like rot and die. That's, that's stuff that I like envision. Okay, got another skeleton. But first off, we're gonna get this guy back out right away. Sack our skeleton again. Attack with Death Baron. And he has a lot of merfolk tricksters. Okay. So right now, we're getting pretty close to being able to kill him. Get this guy out again, get both our skeletons. This one is in, is uh, it just shows up over here, but it's technically in my graveyard. We're going to attack with our flyer and we'll leave the, uh, the death baron up because they just kill each other, pointless. We won. He conceded. So right there, he could have he could have chump blocked our flyer, but we have trample. It would have just trampled through anyways. He couldn't really do much. Plus, we had more creatures. He couldn't have blocked everything. Um, yeah, not too bad of a game. I'm liking this deck. I'm liking it a lot. Anyways, this video is super long. I don't even know if we'll be able to upload it, but I'm gonna try. And uh, we'll go from there. I hope that you learned some things. If you have any questions, let me know. If you liked this video, let me know. And I'll put another one up. Take care.